Good Saturday early afternoon to you. Well, as you can see, I'm doing a, a little touch-up. I put oil-based paint uh, all across here and down here. Uh, this just happens to be gray to protect the wood, the plywood mostly. And um, we're just painting the red one over, trying to match it all up here. It's not a not a big deal. I just want to make it look a little better and kind of match it all in there. Well, we got some mild weather. It's going to be about 50 today. I think it's very close to that now. And uh, it covers pretty good. I mean, this is the cheap bare uh, latex paint, which isn't uh, any good for wood protection, but it is good for looking nice. So we just kind of like go over to over where we had uh, oil-based paint in various places. The sun is in my eyes, so I have to do this. And we can just paint right over this thing. Trying yeah. to cover the sun on the lens, but it's hard yeah, to get my well, hands over there. Why don't you get over here so that it may be a little better? There we go. Just watch out, you don't get paint on your pants. You too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have my work coat on, but I don't have my work pants on. Alright, so now I want to match this up. And you can see where I, you can see a little bit of gray, and this is the black oil-based spray that you see little remnants of here. That's just to kind of like keep the uh, plywood good. I mean, if it was out in the weather for weeks at a time, it would uh, delaminate, but getting a little water on it occasionally isn't going to hurt it. So this is more of a cosmetic uh, covering. And uh, I don't know if I want to paint this. I guess I could paint this too. It's not going to cover that good. It's the aluminum. I'm not a house painter. It's just a... You could leave it silver, couldn't you? Leave it silver? I, 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 that's what I originally did, is left it. Uh, natural aluminum color, which is what that is, or as you say, silver, but... Uh, no big deal. If I don't want to cover good, I can wipe it off. I can do that very easily. Right like now, with a wet cloth. That's one thing about water-based paint, the latex. You can wipe this stuff right off as long as you don't let it dry. See? And the reason is I wanted to paint up underneath the wood. The only way you're going to... I can do this is I, I might just paint this whole thing black with oil-based paint, which is going to be done at another time. Now, you got nails up in here. Where I nailed it in, you can see it, so not a big deal. For now, we'll leave it this way. All right. We're not getting too fussy with this. I just figured that's... Uh, what it is. Uh, my thing reads 62 out here, but I don't think it, it might be 62. Of course, it's making it very difficult. The sun is right in my eyes here. It's showing different angles here. Not a big deal. Nobody's going to see the inside of this set, except me. Now, this stuff dries pretty quick. I can actually hit it. I'm almost ready to hit a second coat on this. Not quite, but almost. I just wanted it to match up. You know, it wasn't matching up good. Is Now, I really need to fill these holes in. But in order to do that, I got that water base, which I think it's frozen. The wood filler, it's water base. And it, it's probably frozen over the winter, so I'm just going to paint over it like that. And these hinges are going to get painted... Um, black. Oil base. Rustoleum black. So I'm not too worried about it. I try to go as neat as I can. It's not easy with the sun right in my eyes here. It just happens to be that time of day. I'm not actually going to be painting the whole shed today. It's just I want to just touch up what I've, uh, you know, the stuff that I did here and added to it. my face right on it because I'm trying to shade my face from the sun. Making it very difficult for me to see where I'm painting. Alright. Got a little bit of paint on the hinges. 
to take it off here. That's off. This is uh, like $10 a gallon. This is the cheap bear. Number nine, I think it is. I call it watercolor. Looks good, but it does nothing to protect the wood. Absolutely nothing. to soak in right. because I didn't put any oil base on the face of this I only put it on the top edge and on the inside so being that it's oil based the latex actually it doesn't really stick to it but it's not a what they call a high traffic area unless you're going to walk up there <laughs> alright so I think we can hit another coat on this decent. You don't get good days too much around here. It's supposed to rain Monday, so I want to get some of this stuff done. Can't wait until to do everything at once. Nothing fancy. Just trying to get it to be all even. Now have a black and gray and redwood all mixed in here. I like to accent it with uh, black hinges, black knob as I put on here. Stuff like that. And this whole thing later in the year will get painted, the whole shed will. But for now, I just wanted to do that and just kind of like uh, make it look a little near. Now this part up here is where the padlock was so I really couldn't do too much with that because there was a padlock up here in the middle and I had to notch out the wood and then I had to cut the door down so it would fit properly after I raised it a little bit to put the hinges on. So on the inside it looks kind of crappy but I can't put another piece of wood here on the top and over this uh, because the door will not close. This is made to close flush. Now I want to explain something to you all out there. You're probably saying well why didn't he make this door, instead of having this sticking out, why didn't he make this door right even with the two by trees? Well, originally this was a, a, a separate door that I lift on and put them in, the, I have two pegs here and I lift it up and goes in and it latch, it overlaps the two by fours. But that was the original design, so that's why you've got an inch and a half sticking out here and uh, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches sticking out here because it was not designed to be a door with hinges. This is an afterthought and I should have built it this way to begin with. The bottom is made the same way. I'm not going to handle it now because I just got paint on it. It overlaps, it lifts up after you unhook inside. It lifts up and is made to be totally removable and set off to the side. Originally, this whole thing was one complete door, but it was very heavy and awkward to move because I make this out of two by threes. When I build something, I don't build it to fall apart. Now, I could have used two by fours, but I figured that would be overkill. Two by threes are fine. If you built it out of anything less than that, the whole damn thing will warp in time in the weather. This this gen house is made out of two by fours sistered up and unless you got a truck you're not going to pull this down I'll tell you right now this is two by if you look back at my videos this is three inch screws in here and these are two by fours and they're screwed right into the wall and they're screwed in here double sistered two by fours half inch plywood now what I want to do in here eventually is on the sides and in here and on the inside of the doors I want to put some soundproofing in here and the reason for that is the generator does make a noise 
and it's not all from the exhaust. A lot of your noise, if you look back on generator videos, and I learned a lot, of, a lot of this noise from a generator, most of it's coming from the engine itself, not from the exhaust. So, um, with some sound absorbing material in here, I can get this to a point where, unless you're right on top of it, you're not gonna hear it. As it stands now, this cannot be heard in the house. When everything's closed up, you don't hear it. You have to open the back door and then you'll hear something running. So, um, and of course the exhaust comes out down out of here. Down out of here. If you look back on my videos, you'll see all that. You know, so this is all half inch plywood. This door is made to open for servicing. I have a ramp that I put on here that I built, and I might have a video on that that comes out to about here. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I have a video. Okay, Tommy knows more about what I got up there than I do. <laughs> and it's designed so that I can unchain the generator inside, roll the generator out onto the platform, Hang on a minute. Okay, you probably remember this setup that I built. These two pins lock in to the side of the gen house. When that side door where the exhaust is opens up, there are two half inch holes. And these two pins drop in there. This is the bottom of it. This is turned over. This is a smooth ramp. But it also can be used at the far end by putting this down at the far end, letting the ramp fall on this. So oh, it's no longer a ramp, it's a platform, at which point I can change the spark plug, change the oil and everything else. So this serves two purposes. It serves as a ramp for the generator in case I need to take the generator completely off and out of the gen house. And also it serves as a work platform. Now you may, let's clear, I got so much junk here. I might as well entertain you while I'm out here. How's that? How about if I get up on this table and do a, a goat jig? Anybody ever see me do a goat jig? Well, you don't want to see it because it contains a lot of methane gas, folks. So, you know what methane gas is, don't you? Uh, yeah. I don't have to tell you what methane gas is. I know what it is. <laughs> Tommy knows what it is, and I think most of you do. Well, anyways, we'll clean this off here. Now, this thing's been sitting all winter. Oh, boy. Look at that. Yeah. I need to clean this off. This has oil-based paint on it. It's all dirty. Yeah, it's all fungi. Well, I haven't had to use it. I haven't had to service the generator, but I really should pull it out and clean the uh, spark plug, change the spark plug and change the oil. But the generator slides on, on this. Mess. What this is here, this is the old Coleman gen house that they used to drop over the top of the Coleman generator. I have videos on that. I have videos on everything I do at one point or another. Yeah, this is just all, I don't know what the hell this is. It's fungus, I guess. The wood is good because I got a lot of uh, coats of thin, um, paint thinner, thinned out, oil-based paint as a soak-in primer, then I put, well, I don't have red, that's all I had. And so this is not latex paint on here. This is oil-based. This is Douglas fir. This is what I use to build my deck. Now this is a two by eight. So there's three two by eights here. 
gonna let this hit the, get, get in the sun and get cleaned out here. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to get some oil-based paint. Uh, if I can't get a quart of it, I am going to get a half pint of um, Rust-Oleum oil base, or probably red or red wood or something. Steam it out, 50% uh, paint thinner, that'll be my uh, primer. Uh, actually, it's pretty well, it's got a regular coat of paint on it now. It has about two coats of penetrating primer that I made up with paint thinner and oil-based paint. And now it's got regular paint over it, so probably it needs a good coat of, another coat of oil-based paint. This is the project we're going to be doing this summer, or this spring, I should say. So anyways, these sides keep it from rolling off the platform. So these pins hook up onto the gen house. This handle is for lifting it, lifting this end and putting this under it and becomes a work platform for servicing the generator. The generator is mounted on a half inch piece of plywood with rollers underneath that I got from Harbor Freight. There are two, four, I believe there's six of them. They roll on this. This serves as a pickup and it also serves as a stop for that board so it will not come off the end of the platform. Now as a ramp, then I disconnected the generator from the roller plywood that it's mounted to and use the wheels that are on the generator and just lift the handle and wheel it right off and it just goes right over this. So the old goat had it all figured out as he usually does in his decrepit old brain. But this is very easy. I, I just decide how I want it and I do it. So let's let this set. Let's let this set and get, we're going to turn it around here so we can get the sun on there. I think it probably needs some bleach. This is pretty heavy. I make things, I don't make them to fall apart. I build them to outlast me. Two by fours and two by eights. I think we're going to do, uh, off camera, I'm going to spray some bleach on that. Bleach and water. We got some work to do on this. I didn't realize this was so bad. Okay, enough flopping. Let's go to the other side here. Put this back over here. Alright, when I open this door, which I have a lock in inside, this door swings open. It clears the exhaust pipe. You've seen that on video. Just look back on the videos. There is a hole here and a hole here. It's behind the door. That ramp will go on here like that. And if I want to roll it down, as I said, the generator is on a platform. You can see the locking eye bolt in the platform. That's a two by two on a half inch plywood all the way around. It's locked in place so it cannot slide out. The generator is also chained in on the bottom. You can't see it from here. Uh, to the base and the wall which is two by four on the inside and the outside and double bolted to the whole thing. I think I flapped long enough. I spend more time describing something than the actually doing it and building it. Not sure how long I had to, I gotta start up yet. Well, I'm just primarily just doing the front of the gen house to try to match all this. See, it looks a lot better now, it's even. You know, you don't have any pieces sticking out, and I'll, I'll probably paint this black with oil base. Oil base will stick to this. I just got to clean it up a lot better than I did. Oil base on the hinges. Oil base on here. This is galvanized. This has already got oil base, but this will be black. This will stay black, and these will be matched. Now, the best thing to do to paint this would be to unscrew it off the wall, off the door, and spray paint it with the Rust-Oleum like I did with that. That would probably be easier. I could do that with the hinges, but I ain't about to take them off. No, I don't feel like dealing with the door again, uh, lining it up. It'll probably line up with the screws, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to paint it with a brush very carefully. 
and put some the blue masking tape around it and just paint it like I did with all my other hinge projects. So we just, you know, we had a brutal winter and things have to be painted, you know. And like I say, this paint looks good. It does absolutely nothing for wood protection. I don't care what brand of bear paint you buy. I've got porch and deck bear latex. It does nothing. Come over here a minute. I'm going to show you what bare oil base porch and deck paint does not do. Follow the old goat. Don't get close. See this? This is your bear. It gets blistered. I have to take my scraper and scrape it down. This is your this is your latex. Latex is no damn good. It does not protect. See that? See the blisters in this? That was coated on a day that we had sunshine for just about a week and everything was totally dry. I sanded this down really good and I put the bare porch and deck paint, outside paint. It's supposed to be one of the best, like $30 a gallon. No good. So you're no better off using that cheap stuff that I got, the cheap bare, the $10 a gallon makes no difference use a thirty dollar gallon does nothing it just got a gloss to it another thing about this paint is if you use it on the floor which I don't you notice there's no glare on the floor and you get any water on it it's like a skating rink it gets slimy and you slip and break your neck so I don't use it I use it on the top rails but what I'm going to do on one of my projects folks out there I'm going to have a belt sander. I bought a belt sander last year at a yard sale for 10 bucks, and I've got three belts with it. I'm going to take a belt sander and I'm going to grind this right down to bare wood. And Joe, Mary Ann's husband, is one of the fellas that gave me some good ideas. 50% boiled linseed oil, or I think it's three quarters boiled linseed oil, one quarter of paint thinner, the oil based paint thinner, mind you. Coat this whole thing on the top only with the boil linseed oil and the paint thinner combination on the top. Let this dry for about a month and then paint it with the latex. It'll soak into the wood and it should hold. It's got to be better than what this is. Follow me. You remember this project, folks? All right. This is a project. I don't have my truck anymore, so I'm going to have to put it in the uh, big van, the uh, Econoline. Uh, I'm going to have Douglas fir on the top. And the reason I'm using Douglas fir on the top of this is because pressure treated warps. And um, you can buy it at the store. It's usually wet. You have to leave it set for a couple months in order to dry it out. And then you can paint it. But by the time it dries out, it usually twists a little bit. Just enough to make it look like a piece of crap. Okay, this is Douglas fir. I put this in in 1985. This is 1985 work right here. What I did last fall is I used Joe's suggestion of boil linseed oil and paint thinner and I coated all this and put a, a heavy coat, made sure it ran down the nail holes and the screw holes and whatever in here and on here and on here. I even did it on the top of this, although these are pressure treated. So now this is ready. This is no more oily. It's soaked in. So I can paint it with the redwood, okay, the cheap crap that I got out there. And I can even use the flooring stuff that I just showed you on the rail. I can use that on the picnic table. But it's going to do the same thing. It's going to peel. 
when I get those two by six six footers they're going to be cut down to six foot at Home Depot so I don't have to deal with it I go stick them right in the big van I need six of them to go from here to here that's 30 inches okay they are going to be coated with boiled linseed oil paint thinner combination on all sides before they're put down here at that point after they are set for a, a couple days I'm going to put them on here and screw them down. I got all the screws for this. Pre-drilling the 2x6 and just screwing them right into these. Okay, and in here for the middle support. And then I would say in about a month I'll just paint the top with redwood. Don't need to paint the bottom. It's protected with oil and seed oil. That's the way the old goat's going to do it, because you've got to get away from latex paint. All right, one more show over here, and that's the end, folks. All right, we're going to wind this video down. You see this little area here? I haven't finished it yet. From here, down here, and from here down. I'm going to paint this. I can't paint this until I clean this off. So when I'm ready to do the whole shed and the whole shebang over here, I will clean everything properly, but right now we're going to just finish this. And that's all I'm going to do today. I just wanted to... Paint is holding good. I don't need another coat, and it's, it's covered good. So let me get started. Here we go. Painting by the old goat. Thanks for watching. La -da -da -dee. They passed an ordinance in the town. They said I had to tear it down. That little brown shack goes back so dear to me. Oh, the health department said if day was over and dead. But it stood forever in my memory. La da da, la da da, la da da, la da da. Oh, one day I was young and full of them and vigor. I used to court the ladies and chase after their magnificent figures. La da dee, la da da, la da dee, la da da da, la da. Hey.